There's several sequences in Jurassic Park 3 where I can't tell the difference. I can't tell where we're in the jungle and where we're on the stage because it all looks so real. It's really great. They created a rainforest, essentially, in every single studio we used. That's another thing that made it so easy to be able to pretend and imagine and get into your characters in the situation that you're in. You step on set and you're in a jungle. Certainly one of the, the, the toughest things would be to uh, do our plane crash. You Two things that I remember, you know, catching my attention right away. The plane crashes into a tree. So we had to build a tree and hide hydraulics into it so we could move this plane around as though it was, once again, slipping and moving. We're building a version of this top of this tree, which we're calling the low tree. It's going to be down at that end of the stage. And the plane, which you just saw on stage 18, will be basically uh, hooked up in that tree and then it'll be greened around. And so we'll have our actors, we'll do all of our shaking, our spinosaurus, we'll be attacking it and all that down there. And then when we get to the scene where we actually drop the plane out of the tree, we'll end up using this big tree here. We'll take the fuselage that we've built that's been designed to drop. We'll haul it all the way up to the top of the stage. Michael Lantieri's guys will, will rig that and then they'll drop it. And the other thing is, this uh, fuselage that crashes has got to tumble along the ground at some point. And I'm just thinking, oh, you know, with people in it, and how are we going to roll it, and how are we going to do this? That's a great sequence, actually. And, uh, we had to be in the plane when it crashed, you know. JP3 came around, I was, I, was, I was excited because, you know, enough time had passed since we had done Lost World, and we felt like a pride of ownership, you know, with these dinosaurs. So, really wanted to be involved. And I met Joe Johnson, and, uh, you know, he was excited, and this was fresh for him. And I thought it was a neat adventure story, you know? And it was technically very challenging for us. We needed to find a dinosaur that was at least looked bigger and better than the T-Rex. And we did a lot of research on it. We had a lot of different dinosaur candidates. But you know, the T-Rex is everyone's favorite dinosaur. Everyone loves the T-Rex. Uh, so we knew we were sort of treading on sacred ground here. We're gonna, we're gonna kill the T-Rex. And we, we thought, okay, let's do it. Let's just do it right up front. Let's say, okay, this is the new kid on the block. The Spinosaurus is bigger and tougher. It was really hard for me to grasp the fact that the Spinosaurus was more powerful than the T-Rex. Because I loved the first movie so much, and the T-Rex was the king. Uh, the Spinosaur was one of my favorite dinosaurs to design, because it's, it's huge. It's bigger than a T-Rex. It's got a head of an, a crocodile, basically, and this giant fin sail on its back. So the challenge was to make that look real and not monster-like, and I think we pulled it off. I, I couldn't wait to see the clash between the T-Rex and the Spinosaur, because that was really raising the bar as far as who was king of the jungle, <laughs> you know? <laughs> The battle between the two of them, between the T-Rex and the Spinosaurus. I think it's the only time that I'm aware of where we have a digital dinosaur fighting an animatronic dinosaur. We had shots where the Spinosaurus is biting the T-Rex, and the T-Rex was entirely CG at the time. Even though we had one, we had an animatronic T-Rex, it was sort of the, the old generation. It was really interesting to design those shots and make it believable because, you know, the, the Spinosaurus was biting something that wasn't there, and then we would do reference shots of the T-Rex for, you know, for the lighting for the computer guys. But I think that's probably one of my favorite parts of the film because of just what we were trying to do, you know, creatively with the technology. The Spinosaurus we did was basically, it was like acting with a backhoe, a big one. This thing was huge. <laughs> had all these hydraulics where it would open its mouth. It was quite an experience to act with a backhoe that could 
rip your head off in any second.